the living faith so that on Sunday we can look into my two-part sermon. It's almost finished. It's um, called the prayer of faith. The last aspect of this faith labor will be the works of faith. The works of faith. We want to peep into James chapter 2. I will do a little tonight to show you that there are works that announce that faith is existent. So that's where I'm going to finish. And then we're going to press into some other things. I have a set of topics with Jerry, right? Uh, maybe you should send them back. To me again so that my labors will continue for yet a little while and he that shall come will come and will not tarry now the just shall live by faith but if any man draw back my soul shall have no pleasure in him The 37th verse of the 10th chapter of Hebrews, which is our opening verse, suggests to us that when the spiritual labor is faith, it, the results do not always show up in the now. So the Bible speaks in the consciousness of a promise that had been given and an expectation that had been furnished as a result of that promise and a waiting period for the fulfillment of that promise that you see what we call the waiting of faith happens within a specified time frame and the testimony of scriptures concerning the shape of that time frame is that it is a little while. So that if you came tonight and... Where is Angela? Okay, it's not around this evening. Okay, it was... Uh, is he? Okay, it's up there. Uh, you were holding two, two items. Let's not announce you. You were holding two items. And you said to me, you say, ah, the things that God did for me in the month of February are so great. Too. That's for him. He said, because these two things I'm holding in my hand, I've been praying for them for how many years? Where is it? How many years? Four years. Now, for you, four years is long. But according to the testimony of scriptures, the waiting of faith is a little while in case you've been waiting for 30 years i'm saying that the waiting of faith is a little while it means that when faith is a substance of your waiting there is a distribution from god that makes time fleeting hi jesus help my life i i'm having my best days teaching the bible i'm i'm, I'm sincere with you There is something that God supplies that ensures that 30 years does not look like 30 years. And you know, if, if <laughs> that's why you must labor to hear from God. Because if you build 30 years of waiting on the falsehood of faith, see, you will wear out. By the 10th year, you will be a specimen of compromise in all of his colors. The Bible says to us in, in the book of Isaiah, that's chapter 40, right? Give me the 30th verse. So give me 31, that's what I need. It says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. The economy that ensures that many years looks like a little while is, <clears throat> I need water. That 
distribution from God that takes away the pressures of waiting. That makes many years look like a few years is captured on the lips of the prophet Isaiah as the renewal of strength. What makes waiting long? What makes waiting wearing out? Is that the strength of the waiter abates, it reduces, it reduces. I'm coming. Say, ah, I've been here for long. What gives you the consciousness of time? It's not a wristwatch when you are waiting. It's the wearing out that happens to expectation. But you see, the man whose strength is renewed means that the man is as fresh as the day of the promise. Did you hear what I said? That's the concept of renewal. It means if when God gave you the utterance, you, your, your, your measurement of waiting capacity was 100. If we come after 10 years and God has not fulfilled what he said, when we measure your waiting capacity, it's still going to be written 100. There is an economy that ensures that your strength is not abated. Who hoped against hope and believed when there was no reason to believe. Even Sarah. Even though she was past childbearing. Because what the supply of strength did to her was to bring her to a place of reckoning. The Bible says she judged him faithful who had promised. So if anybody comes to say, it don't happen. It's taking so long. You are saying, how long? Say you've been waiting here for 20 years. Time doesn't happen to a waiter. Because his strength is renewed. In two minutes, can you ask the Lord over those things you have been waiting for that he renews your strength? I know I can't finish. I know. I know. Because the assignment tonight is to press us into the practicality of the faith life. That's what will make you wait. There is an economy. There is an economy. It is called the renewal of strength. There is an economy. It flows, it flows, it flows. It ensures that strength does not abate. Oh. There was a man in scriptures that testified of this reality. His name was Caleb. Forty years ago, when God made this promise to me, I am as still as strong as I was. Give me this mountain. Age was happening to him. But strength was not reducing because he was a waiter. He was a waiter. You want to ask God to renew your strength. It is the responsibility of the giver of the promise to renew the strength of the promise holder. We can wait. We can wait. Oh, we will wait. We will wait. We will wait. Help me, Jesus. Holy God. We will wait. Sit down, sit down. On you. Make sure you are praying. Don't be distracted. Now, I want everybody praying to Holy God. We will wait on you. I know you are beginning to think that time has a way of, of wearing out the promise of God the one who promised is called the eternal one time has no effect on him and if time has no effect on him I came to announce that time has no effect on what he told you he will keep his promises he will keep his promises he will keep all of his promises and we are in the season of remembrance. He will ensure that this season does not pass until you have fulfilled, he has fulfilled what he has told you. Help me, Emmanuel, help me. Help me. Gloria hasoso batonia, sambo salali tomohamo, rendo sofi bahotia somehaya. 
the common shape of a tummy, the stone your color shall be in a time. You will do it. It's not in your nature to lie. It's not in your nature to be false. You will fulfill everything that you have said because you spoke from a standpoint of fulfillment. Oh, Matimo Rotenahai. Can we pray for one more minute? In a gimnos coleto solaria. Femi brescanite boya. Oh, they say that hope deferred makes the heart perfect. We are not obtained and look back. We are dead and hold on and are safe. There is a good report at the end of my wedding. There is a good report at the end of my wedding. I will leave a generation with proofs that God is what waiting on. My wife is here. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I couldn't sleep because of my meditations. I couldn't sleep. It was past six this morning. And I started trying to sleep. By the time I successfully slept, past seven, my son came. I said, I'm ready for school. And I had to rise. I was rolling over and over the things he had said to me. Because he had a little while. Would you look person? It's because your eyes have been measured into physical sights. May he activate that lens within. To make you see that the things that make for your establishment were perfected before they were spoken. When I come to church and I say none of you will waste. I'm saying even if they said you will waste. Believe me. I have seen everyone decorated in the glories that God has, has a portion to them. Yes. Because the strength of darkness in the places that you came from. It's not an original reality. We were sharing this afternoon. I was speaking of all the nations. That if God calls you a prophet or maybe a pastor, you were born as one. Before the church comes into the consciousness of who you were, you were born as one. You are not trying to become one. You are growing into who you are. How do I know? Because the introduction of that great prophet Jeremiah was before I found you, I knew you. What I'm doing tonight is not an afterthought in God. It was because of what he knew that made him form me. So all of my, even my physical body is built from ordination. So the environment into which you were born, the parents that gave birth to you, the enemies you have, the friends you have, are not as original as who you are. For yet, sit down, for yet a little while, he that shall come will come and will not tarry. I said when it comes to faith, the first thing to do is to believe that every word of scripture is true. It means if somebody tells you God has stayed long, he's tarrying, tell the person that the Bible says that he that will come will come and will not tarry. Isaiah 53 1 gives an announcement. Who had believed our report and unto whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Give me my second verse. Now, 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 now. When you begin to study scriptures, you must understand the, the reality of dispensations. And that's what the word now comes to introduce to us the apostle paul and his contemporaries in the new testament gave a lot of attendance to laboring in drawing timelines in the new testament so you also see scriptures like now the lord is that spirit it means that there was an experience that defined the former dispensation for example then the Lord was the man Jesus. 
now all of the energies of the Lord Jesus have been invested in the spirit that's what it means so that when you look at this scripture if you go to you find out that the just shall live by faith expresses in about four places in scriptures there are two in the Old Testament if I'm right and two in the New Testament and you find out that there is something very uniquely different about the renditions the Old Testament advertises this reality of living by faith it says the just shall live by his faith whether you are in the Old Testament or the New Testament the faith life is compulsory but before the cross before the exchange and that's what I said to us on Sunday that the cross is the platform of exchange before the cross you needed to live by your faith the consciousness of now meant that the cross created a timeline now the just shall live by faith there was the extraction of his and if you are wondering where the his went to it's because the New Testament man cannot be referred to as an original creature. In Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, Paul begins to give us the testimony of the New Testament believer. He said, I am crucified with Christ. What it means is that the man who lived by his faith had died. Nevertheless, I live. And it's possible for you to think that because you died and now you live, you can still continue to live by your faith. So Paul had to make it clear to us that this new existence in, or in this new dispensation, I live not by my faith, but by the faith of the Son of God, the one who loved me and gave himself for me. So the New Testament man lives by the faith of the Christ. Now, in ecclesiastical circles, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of labors to unravel the concept, and if you check, you'll find out to unravel the concept of living by the faith of, because of its mystical connotations. This is one of those areas where Peter brings admonition that there are some things that Paul writes that are difficult to understand. Are you with me? Now, the utterance is not to the end that you avoid it. It's that you will ask for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to understand. I'm saying that if you read your Bible long enough, you understand that. I, I speak good English. It's written in English. It will not be an advantage. Some time ago, I was teaching on the subject of prayer. And I said to us that there were many things that Paul wanted to also teach that he could not bring to his hearers in doctrine. And so he decided to embed those things in prayers. How do people who have two eyes, and one of the things that you do with your natural eyes is that you see, right? But you avoid light. If I beamed the full light of a vehicle to your eyes, what would you do? It means the natural eyes is not designed to be flooded with light. If he had said that to them, they would have felt this is mystical. So he went into prayers and said that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened. It means he was talking about another eye that his audience did not know. And because they could not bear his utterance, he decided to capture it as a petition. Fulfill it even if they don't understand it. That's Paul. Is somebody with me? That's the advantage in prayer. Sometimes you don't understand what you're saying. But when the spirit is the one that governs the prayer enterprise, there are utterances you can make and it can take you 10 years to understand that that utterance is what occasioned this progression. That was Paul. So don't be afraid of Paul. Whisper to your neighbor. Ah, you are not preaching good. Don't whisper. Is that what I said? Did I say whisper? Okay, help me preach to your neighbor. Don't be afraid of Paul. When you come across his mystical saints, ask for the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge
knowledge of the Christ. That's what to do. It doesn't take too much. Don't, don't embellish the request. Lord, I ask of you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. You have a promise that if you ask what will happen, you receive. And there are many scriptures that suggest that that reception, because it's a now need, will attract a now supply. The Bible says, we do good not from him to whom it is meet. Neither say to thy neighbor, come tomorrow and I will give it to you when it is in the power of your hand to give it. So if I'm studying a verse of scripture and I desperately need to have an answer, the fatherhood of God ensures that if I ask, they run a check. Does God have the spirit of wisdom and revelation? Yes. Does he have it now? Yes. Why should he tell me to come next year to receive it if I need to unlock a scripture? He means he will give it now. It is in the power of his hand to do it. And so he gives it when? No. Now. So what we do is not abandon it. We pick the book back. He gives it now. You may not receive it in the same minute. Because there are journeys. So it's a journey of it. Are you with me? So we stay and study. And I've told you one of the keys to unlocking scriptures when it looks very mystical after you've prayed that prayer is that you don't read in your heart. Read, read, read so that your ears can hear. Engage more of your physical senses. You will find out that as long as your intention is accurate, the spirit of truth begins to guide you into all truth. I'm a novice in scriptures. I'm still a novice. But I'm showing you how it can it will ultimately look like we are the ones that wrote it. We have not started teaching it. We have not started. We are just scratching the ground. A time will come when the darkness will be very dark. And then God will now begin to shine his light brightly. But these are the two so that there will be many that will do the job. May God keep you till that day. Amen. So the just shall live by faith. And the faith by which the just, who is the just? The one who has gone through the spiritual protocol or technology called justification. And if you have basic knowledge in Microsoft Word, what does it mean to justify? It means to align. So we were a people out of alignment. This was God's part. We operated here. And in justification, he made us right with him. That's what we call justification. So a man who has been made right with God is called the just. And the Bible says that man must live by faith and according to the witness of Paul, it is by the faith of the Son of God. So many people interpret faith of the Son of God basically as faith in. So if you look through the writings, what is majorly emphasized is a reliance upon the person, which is also an aspect of faith. But you see, the Bible there are two other meanings to that statement and I'll bring you to them. Another one is the faith of. It means that the Son of God is in possession of a faith. The very same faith with which he did kingdom business with his father. God spoke to the Christ. Those words from the platform of operation in the Christ. You have been given that platform to operate. When I go for meetings, there's something I do. When I see that a lot of people are coming out and the hand of the Lord is still upon me, I begin to sense that people may want to defy me. So God has taught me a technology by which I can make the people know this guy is like us. So I call somebody and say, come. And sometimes what I do is, you can do what I can do. Now, this hand contact it's not just the tap of his shoulder. It's actually the transmission of a spiritual reality. Are you with me? What I'm gifting that person, whether he has prayed, even if he has never fasted, what I'm giving to him is the privilege of functioning on the same pedestal where I stand. That's what the Bible reveals when it says that we are seated 
together with Christ it means that you are functioning on shared authority Have we met? Uh, this is my friend. Ah, come on, man. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. The Lord bless you. Are you done? Okay. So, that's so I just say now. You go and lay hands on them. And sometimes, it, the brothers are very bold. The ladies just about to open their mouth and boom and you see them to go back like oh, what kind of thing is this because it's no longer based on what they have found they have entered into the platform of somebody else and it works same way now that person will need to labor into something else because many times it's it's transient are you with me but that's also the concept of functioning by the faith of another so when i attempted to go and lay hands on people i had an expectation and what god did was to gift me a spiritual reality which is the substance of that expectation so if somebody is sick and i want to lay hands on the person i am not thinking that the person will not get well are you with me there is a spiritual reality and that's what is transmitted in my hands that ensures that the person is well so the person says i'm healed we rejoice but we are not surprised are you with me but i'm saying that it is possible that i can commit to you that same sp spiritual reality which is the platform is faith not a substance the bible calls him the foundation upon which things that are not revealed can happen good so that's what i gave to you when i imparted you because i have imparted you your hope must change instantly even if you laid hands on everybody before and the person died it's not about what you have found in god now so is somebody getting what i'm saying there is a transmission of what i have found in god to you so if i give you my faith it means the hope is also given to you. So what are the things that Jesus accept, expects to accomplish in the earth realm? That's what a man begins to expect when he comes into the faith of the Christ. In your own, you can't take a city. Are you with me? But when you have the faith of the Christ, the end product of his faith becomes the end product of your own. That's why you walk into a city and you claim the city. Not because you are strong, but because you are prayed by shared faith. That's the second definition. The third one brings to us the consciousness that faith is a gift. Because the word of there is the Greek word ek. It means that it's sustained. It makes you understand that the faith that you possess was not created inside you. It came to you. And then it helps to label where that faith came from. So when we say the faith of the Son of God, one, it means that um, is faith in Him. Two, it means the, that you are coming into a shared spiritual reality. Three, it helps to dictate the source of what you possess. Amen. So that's how the New Testament man lives. That's how he lives. It's simpler than the Old Testament one. It's simpler. It's simpler. I, for the way of the Lord is the way of the way. I choose the way. Choose the way of the Lord. So stay on that song. A lot of people want to live, still want to live by their faith. So their potency is built on what they have done and what they have not done in case you are in this house tonight and things have been done by you negatively or done with you negatively or done to you negatively when you come to the lord genuinely those things no longer count 
the rest of your life begins to draw its definition from what he has done and what he has shared with you because you came into an exchange so i see people are saved and then when they begin to suffer they say ah god god i know i know i've been a thief all my life and because i've been a thief of all, all my life no good thing can happen to me what you need is not prayer deliverance what you need is knowledge deliverance because the bible says if the son sets you free you shall be free indeed so you have been set free that's what the cross came to do but you see the gates of the prison can be open and a man can continue to stay there because it is the truth that is known that makes free the truth does not have the ability to break shackles it only establishes an experience the experience of what has been done on your behalf now you want to raise your right hand and say because of what jesus has done I live by his faith because of what Jesus has done I live by his faith because I live by his faith his expectations become my reality can you say that with boldness his expectations become my reality so if Jesus's relationship with God could not sponsor failure you cannot be living by the faith of Jesus and be thinking failure. If you were using, do they, say, do they still use Sony Ericsson? Sony Ericsson still makes phones. They are not common. Okay, name one phone company now. Okay, maybe the iPhone, for example. If you are using maybe an iPhone 15 and something happened, maybe you, you put it in your back pocket like some people do. And the way you sat on it, you broke the case, right? If you go to an Apple's, a, a very serious Apple store, they can replace the external covering of your phone. Are you with me? Is the reality going to change? I mean, it's your phone because of a replaced covering. Is it going to be functioning like the iPhone 6? You are now the body of the Christ. He lives inside you. So that new body could say, well, me, I don't know. And if they decide that, I don't know what the size of the iPhone 15 you, looks like. I used to use a 14. If it's the same size, if they don't get the case of a 15 and they put it inside a 14, how would the phone function? Like a 14 or a 15? The question is, the man who has been called to live by faith is so conscious of externalities. The reality of a phone is what is inside it. Abi? Sorry, I know I'm wasting your time, but I'm trying to make this thing as simple as possible. The real, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless, I live, yet not I. But Christ that liveth in me, he was like an iPhone 15. I think the 15 series is still the latest series, right? He was like an iPhone 15. And so when he went to the cross, the Bible says his body was broken for you. So it's like a phone that fell and was crushed by a tire. They now move it to an engineer. The engineer says, see, it's, just, it's a new phone. I don't have the body. But if body fits into a 14, can we put it into a 14? I know what will be in your mind. Ah, no, there's a way they arrange the lights. I want people to know that. It's a 15. Say, oh God, say you'll be taking your motherboard away. Okay, put it inside a 14. And then your friend comes and say, is it a 15? Say it's still 15, no. But it's inside a 14. You find out that the potentials of the body will operate exactly like a 15, no matter the, the old look. So if a man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He's not trying to be a new creature. He doesn't need to grow taller. He doesn't need to grow whiter. He doesn't need to grow darker. He is a new creature. What was changed was within. Because that's how spiritual change works. It works from within out. That's how God travels from the Holy Spirit of holies he comes from the holies of holies into the holy place and then he comes and stands in front of the tabernacle put me to test you will know that my name is Tolu Akbola, but i have the holy ghost here because of potential that 
that's how faith works so when you look at problems the bible says we walk by faith and not by sight because john will say i don't know anybody there's nobody with me but there's a body with you and there's a body in you those are the two relationships of the holy spirit is in you as the essence of the christ is in you, is with you that's your pawn as the enablement of the christ so the anointing and then the presence that's what brings down obstacles that's what puts food on your table that's what gets you a wife in season that's what gets you a husband in season that's how you were designed to get your your, your job i've shared with you the story of my first job in lagos I became so desperate to go to Lagos. My dad told me from the beginning when I came from Yusuf, come to Obama shop. I said, no. What are they doing here? So I'm not coming. So I prayed, 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 prayed. And one day he came to my room and says, tomorrow you will go to Lagos. Mommy said she had called her auntie, packed my bags, went to Lagos. Looked for work for long. And then when my cousin who works in NT and Shego is going to work, he was an information systems engineer. I think they had only 13 in the nation that time. So Shego used to travel, fly to, fly to. I was wondering, since I've been a baby, uh, that was, those have been my last flights. Okay. So when he goes to work, I don't want my auntie to say there's no work. So I carry my bag and I go to Obafemi Aolowa and I begin to walk around. Track all that computer village, come down the road and then drive back to Oba. And one day, I landed on Oba from Aolo and saw him, a, a strange street. The street is still there. I followed that street in the last one year. Olowu Street. There's really no kind of job you cannot get on that street. You can try when you go to Lagos. And I saw a cyber cafe. So I began to browse there for a job and you know there are always vacancies uh, may God there are always vacancies but there are not always jobs may God give you understanding one day the man said you have not found work I'm a government worker be working here how much will you be paying me he said you'll be browsing free and I was willing to take that arrangement trek from home he now taught me how to generate um what do they call those things? Tickets. A username, password. And that was my work. That's where I learned basic web design. All those old PHP and, and those things. And then one day, I was taking my bath to go to Lowell Street. And the great one punctuated my worship under the shower. Let me help you. Ah, you can see me. Today you go to a papa. I don't know where a papa is, so and it was quiet. So I quickly ran to a bus stop. And the person said, Ah, it's late now. Take a bus to Ikeja Under Bridge. And so I got to Ikeja Under Bridge. I was willing to follow a kidnapper as long as the kidnapper said, A papa. But I lost fear. When I got there, how do I get there? The person said, oh, you first get a bus to Obalende. I'm right, Abby. So I took a bus and I got to Obalende. And all those places are fine now. Those places were jungles. Kidnapping was not rife, but, but you can lose personal items. You can come out of a bus and the only thing on your shoulder is the rope. <laughs> you know when you sit, there's a rope on your hand and the bag is resting. That rest is an advantage to, 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 to a thief. They will cut the rope, cut the rope. When you get up, you just find out that your light is only the rope. Now, somebody saw him stealing from you, but that person takes a note of silence. Out of the blues, a man walks to me and says, you are going to a papa to look for work. I said, yes, follow me. And so I followed him. We entered the bus and we continued to join him. As we approached Wharf Road, he said, look at that building, 22 Wharf Road. Go to the owner of that company. Mention my name to him. His name was Shego. 
mentioned my name to him that I attempted to market um, insurance to him some years ago that he should employ you. Sir, can I have your number in case I get there? He said, he have my number. And he gave me his number. And I got there and met my first boss to say, sir, and this is... He said, who? Shego. So I don't know Shego. He gave me his number. Boom, 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 boom. Until today, that number has not gone through. Angels are not in scriptures. They are here. I mean, they are not just there. They are here. What gives them motion is the word of God. And so when a man becomes an addicted follower of divine instructions, you don't need to pray to encounter angels. They are there. Watching over every word. Watching over every word. There's no work. There's no work. The Lord said, go back there. I've shared with you how in the day he promised me on a Thursday, it's okay, by next week we'll see what we can do. My next problem was, how do I go to Ogba from my papa? No transport for me. And as I was walking out, the man said, come, come, come. The Lord said that you do have transport for Ogba to my papa is 600 now. The man gave me 4,000. I came out in front of 22 Wharf Road, knelt down, lifted my hands up to God in tears. It was to the God who sees and provides. I didn't know the things I was, I'm sharing with you this night. If I knew these things at maybe like university level like this, I would have had wings. So it means by the time you are our age, God will be expecting more from you because so much more has been given to you. What they told us was, have faith in God. Can it be explained? They told us that if you have faith in God and you are afraid, you don't have faith. Now we understand that one of the expressions of faith is fear. Godly fear anyway. And that the opposite of faith is not fear, it's doubt. Are you with me? Because faith has to do with a strong conviction. Doubt expresses as in, in, in swaying. But you can be obeying God and be afraid. Noah's expression of faith was reverence, reverential fear. It was he built the ark in fear. As we advance tonight, and that's what the Lord did to me in the middle of the night, he told me not to advance my teaching on faith this night, because I've not even entered the teaching. Everything I said now is just trying to explain those my entrance scriptures. It's to bring to you the witness, as far as modern times are concerned, one of the foremost expressions of faith, or the foremost patriarchs of faith. Why did, do I want to bring witness? Because I need to ask him, why can't I just teach? The Lord said to me in verse 2 of Hebrews chapter 11 that there is a report that has been secured by the eldership. And so having secured that report, which the Bible calls a good report, Faith has been proven beyond doubt that it works. A good report means that there was there were they had signs that God approved of their faith. And I need to separate a good report from the product of faith. Two different things. So that if God says, you will go to Jamaica. I might want to go to Jamaica here. Okay, not likely. But what is in my mouth this night is Jamaica. So, let's say God says we go to Jamaica. A good report is not that you went to Jamaica. Are you with me? That's what we call the product of faith. Why am I building that? Because if you sustain your reading, you will find out 
that these icons of faith called these elders actually everybody that was spoken of in Hebrews chapter 11 obtained a good report even those who were sown into help me find the verse 20 36 thank you Pastor Diola is it 36 was in 36 no 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 it will be after that so 38 39 let's check help me help me good the bible says and all these who are the this the abrahams the ones who were stoned the ones who were homeless enoch noah abel the bible says and all these having obtained a good report through faith received not the promise what the bible calls the promise is the product of faith so when Abraham gave back to Isaac, Isaac was not the promise. The promise was Christ. Are you with me? What Sarah conceived was a natural son. The seed that she was supposed to sustain as per a bloodline was a Christ. The fellowship that Enoch was snapped into was not the end of his faith. The end of his faith was communion with Christ. The sacrifice of Abel was a shadow. The fulfillment of that sacrifice was Christ. Are you with me? Yes. Because it was a more acceptable sacrifice. And that's the shape of the sacrifice of the Christ. The preservation that Noah occasioned. Even he came out of the preservation and got drunk. It was a, a more secure preserve, kind of preservation, which is a person, Christ. That was the one. They only looked from afar, but all of them had a badge. There was an experience that God expressed with their lives that was God's sign of approval. That, ah, you relied on me, so have this thing. Are you with me? All of this, having obtained a good report to faith, received not the promise. Give me the next verse. Why? It's because God having provided better things, sorry, some better thing for us that without us should not, that they without us should not be made perfect. The experience of what the Bible calls the promise was supposed to be communal. Have you gone visiting somebody before and you said, ah, what's for dinner? And they said, fried rice, so, but it's six people who are waiting for. So the first two that come, they now give you, say, be drinking Coke. You understand? Be drinking Coke. So it's rice, say you will wait. So every one of them had to wait so that with us, they can become perfect. The advantage of faith in this time is that you can have both the good report and the promise. As a matter of fact, the arrangement now is that it's first the promise that comes. That's your entrance into the economy of God and then your life begins to have attendant proofs of approval that truly you trusted in God. Okay. So we want to look at the witness of one of the patriarchs of faith. I didn't know I was going to be this long because I need to be done later 7.45 so that book can go. I trust God that in a few months we'll have bus services so that going home will be okay we'll have bus services so that people going to yuako people go, i mean what do you think people going to stadium people going to adenike so that people going to town so that it will be easy to to move there's so much to do and we can't start church at two o'clock yeah, so 
Maybe within the next one month or so, we should be able to have that. If God puts it in my heart, it means it's done. So it's done. So it's not uh, no, no pressures. Yeah. So let's look at the witness of this man. And the icon God placed in my heart is Smith Wigglesworth. So I had to do a little bit of study about him um, in reference to his perspective of faith. One other reason that makes me comfortable to deal with the subject of faith from the witness of a patriarch is that the call to faith living or if you want to live in faith it means so, um, is this? No. existing by faith after the cross is not new There are two words that we can use, in, and I use them a lot in my teachings, to define the subject of God's new. And they are drawn from the consciousness that the acts of God with his people are either linear, it means God uses you like a guinea pig of some sort, he pioneers a reality with you. However, God does not have a penchant for pioneering things. Many of his dealings with us are designed to come to us in cyclic fashion. He does something for a generation and returns it. Now, something that comes in cyclic fashion operates as a different kind of new from something that operates as a totally brand new thing. The word for total brand new is the word novel. It's a French word. It means originally new. The problem with a novel new is that history is not an advantage. When God told Abraham to sacrifice the only seed of posterity, he had no person who had done that before him. And so it was a more difficult decision for him to take. If they can caught fire and send you into it because of your faith in Jesus, there's a higher tendency for you to stay. In the fire. Why? Because you are armed with the testimony of the three Hebrew boys. You will enter the fire with the consciousness that a fourth man will appear until you read Hebrews chapter 11. That sometimes it doesn't come. And what enters into it burns. You see, the fact that they endured the fire until their voices faded is what the Bible calls for those people a good report. There's a book I want to encourage you to read because sometimes I feel that why some people are not so much into what they are into. Somebody was still, when I was joining to Lagos and a young lady was in the vehicle, we're all sharing, and she said, I have a problem with this kind of Christian nitty that they are introducing to us. So somebody asked her, are you a Christian? She said, yes. She said, but I believe that it's, it's, it's the religion of the whites that they should just allow us to be doing our own thing. The man now said, you know our own thing? When God says, don't touch this thing, you touch it and you say, forgive me. And he forgives you. You think Sean Go is that friendly? So I now had to ask her, so but you're a Christian, but it's a borrowed religion. I, I really don't understand your persuasions. She now said, I just like Christianity. So I, I said, okay. So I introduced church to her because I didn't have time to talk. So when you come back, so maybe after three weeks after the assumption, I think she said she'll come back this week. Maybe I'll just ask, oh, is she in church tonight? She's not back yet. We are not here because we like it. The intentionality of God to get us here was stronger than the feeling. Uh, was stronger than the feeling. We came here because of administered realities. As he spoke, the realities found expression. We didn't believe a lie. It's impossible to commit your life to Jesus because of the sweetness of the voice of a preacher. No. Not even in a school environment. You people are more intelligent. Than if you can pass biochemistry, eh? 
then it means that the sweetness of the voice of elect of a pastor should not be able to bring you to Jesus. There was an infusion of the essence of faith in that utterance. There was a deposit in your life that made you say, even though I'm intelligent, I'm willing to abandon my intelligence and live by the movements of a spirit that I may never be able to see in my natural life. Do you think that deeply? <laughs> Uh, maybe because me, I was, I was, I, I'm, I was born cerebral. I, I'm a processor. So come to Jesus, come to Jesus. And when we get to the front, the only one we see is the pastor. The first question is, is the pastor Jesus? Give your life to him. The average person does not have tangible contact with his life. If you said, give your face to where I can touch it, how did you give your life? It was all a, trans, a spiritual transaction. You were being moved to give your life. That's why we can't boast. I like the, the, the life application um, version of the vast those that he had foreknown. He also predestinated to be conformed to the image of the Son. The Bible says, for God knew before time those who will come to him and for them he set an end you were I don't like the word but that's the, that's the cheapest English word it looks negative but I'll use it you know jealousy is not negative for God you were, what I want to say is you were manipulated to come this far <laughs> I like that song. Wide eyes. With wide eyes. Do you want to put those two realities together? You were mystified, but it's wide eyes. <laughs> May we be just like a child staring at the beauty of looking. A grown up man stands up from the back because of words and says, Jesus, I will live for you. He's under an influence. And may that original influence continue to govern you. Amen. You are not afraid to go back home to say, I've committed myself to Jesus. So why are you not afraid to follow his leaders? Your first coming was. Huh? The Bible says the message of the cross is foolishness unto those who are perishing, but unto us who are saved, it is the power of God. I love the Yoruba translation. Bible says, only were ni or You know, at least you know what were is. Only were ni or Lo do I want in shape? Shuba for what ya bala have love. It was power manipulation. That's how we came. That I mean, you can stand in the market. Your megaphone is dying out. We are speaking, and a tout can break down. To say, ah, enough is enough. I will follow Jesus. He brings his tools. Have you seen people bring charms before? Do you know what it means for a man to bring charms to church? The guy has enemies in church, and he can't trust God to save him. <laughs> he comes with, with charms in his waist, on his legs, on his neck, on his forearms. And then you now say, Jesus can save you. And the man decides to make himself vulnerable to his enemies on the strength of following Jesus. That abandonment is the same abandonment with which life was supposed to be lived. Our fathers have proved it. That's why I like their songs. One song in the Baptist hymn that says, Take up your cross and follow me. I heard my Savior say, I gave my life to ransom thee. Surrender your all today. The chorus says, Wherever he leads, I go. Wherever he leads, I go. I follow my master who loves me so wherever he leads I go 
Let me show you Smith Wigglesworth's testimonies of the definition of faith. One. It says, real faith has perfect peace and joy and a shout at any time. It always sees victory. It has perfect peace. Oh, your rent is due. Landlord is coming tomorrow. And the landlord sometimes don't come first in the morning. They first come in the evening. To say, see, this is your last night in this house. You know it's rainy season. Before you come from class, your items will be on the road. Can you sleep? But when you find a man who has faith, he will sleep. But boy, bikini. Oh no, 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 la. That's faith. <laughs> Are we sure the landlord will wake up? <laughs> okay, let's assume that the landlord will not die. You think the landlord is strong in the face of the manipulations of God? That's why I took you to that story. If words in the lips of a weak man can make a doubt commit to Jesus, you think your landlord is strong. All souls are mine. That same landlord can come and say, I don't know, I don't. But she after six months, pale, pale. And you are wondering what happened to him. God wakes up people in the night. <laughs> ah, you see, we have not seen these things because when it threatens you, you begin to orchestrate steps into slavery. How do I know? You begin to call people to... There's a cheap way to, to become a slave. It's in scriptures. The Bible says that a borrower is a slave. Say, ah, please... Uh, uh, Anything to ban me? Say, whoa, this 20,000 is for 40,000. Say, just bring it, just bring it. I've seen my father cheaply say, If heaven will fall, let it fall. Lord, I trust you. And I found out that heaven doesn't fall. I think it's easy for me because of how I grew. <laughs> I keep telling you, if I become a false believer, Jesus will come after me. Perfect peace and joy. You don't know when he has a lot of money, you don't know when he has little. Because he knows that money is not an end, it's a means. If money can buy it, favor will bring it. So there are so many tools to get to meet your need. Money is just one of them. Ah, did you hear me? Money is just one of, and favor is super stronger than money. You've not bought, gone to buy something before and somebody says, we have big. Even on Sunday was, we, we went to the car wash and my son said, say biscuit, biscuit, and what? Fresh you. And so we walked. I had money in my pocket. And said, biscuit, and fresh you. And I was going to pay. And somebody said, I bought for him. I said, for me. He said, not for you, sir. For him. What prayer did he pray? No, what prayer did he pray? What work will he do to afford money? He was saying something when we were coming from school today. He said, we will buy something. I've forgotten what he said. He said, God and daddy will buy it. Because if he comes to ask me anything, I say, go and talk to God. He will buy it. It means when it's my age, because if we stay on this part of truth, the things we'll be able to believe God for will be stronger. All the mistakes we made, all the troubles we got ourselves into because we could not have faith in God will not be their own. All what things we often forfeit, all what needless pain we bear, all because we will not carry everything to God in prayer. We have become slaves of men, slaves of systems, slaves of the ungodly. Because we will not go to God. Two, he said great faith is the product of great fights, great testimonies 
are the outcomes of great tests great trials can only come out of great trials I love this one and it comes with a story I really didn't read this one I listened to Lester Sumrall's testimony of Smith Wigglesworth he said that Wigglesworth always says that faith is facts to be believed that's how we arrange it so facts or knowledge to be believed and commands to be obeyed facts to be believed and commands to be obeyed facts to be believed it means you are one step away from the product of faith once God has given an instruction your work of faith becomes obedience that's all faith is facts to be believed and commands to be obeyed so there was a story he told that there was a time you know in the olden times they used to have what you call a healing line so ministers will sit the way you are sitting like this i've seen our robot sometimes he will turn his chair the other way like a handleless chair so he just turns the chair rest because he's tired he rests on the back of the chair and then when people are passing they lay hands they pray they lay hands they pray they lay hands they pray so there was a day they brought a certain man who was dying to Smith Wigglesworth and he approached unto the man in the consciousness of the possibility of healing so that's he has believed what he's waiting for now is a command right to be obeyed and the command was to strike that man don't do it if he doesn't send you <laughs> you will stay long in the water police station <laughs> so what the Lord told him to do was to strike the man we go what has unconventional healing approaches so he took his hand the man was dying and boom in his books he will tell you that he was not hitting that man he, he sensed the devil the spirit of infirmity there and it was the spirit that took the blow immediately he hit the man the man stopped breathing and the people shouted you have killed him you have killed him he didn't bat an eyelid next when he when i believe him that's faith and he commands me and i have obeyed him i'm not checking performance it's his business that's faith Obedience to the commands of faith is the end of your labors. Once you have obeyed, you have entered a rest. Let God be true and every man a liar. So those ones were trying to look around. Who, how do we apprehend this killer? He didn't even check. And that after a while, after praying for a few other people, the man who was left on the couch dead walked he up the couch himself and began to shout and the wiggles what looked at him everybody was excited and said so you go your way praising jesus next and then he continues he knew that the outcome was not death and so if death was the outcome that was not the final sin. many of us have doubted god because of a temporary event And God said that he will provide for me. Now I've woken up in the morning. There's nothing to eat. You have 24 hours to prove his utterance. And if it's 11.59, it's still come true. There was some time two years ago, I brought my brother, brother Shion. How many of you were in that meeting? To come and speak to us. Brother Shion was in charge of one of the orphanages in Ukomosho. Had quite a number of children. And there was a day that happened in the orphanage. And there was no food. I mean, no food. The children were on holidays, and that made it worse because if they were in school, at least after a while, they would go to school. So they were at home. And he said, because there was no food, he decided to elong, he told us himself, he decided to elongate the devotion that morning. 
So they sang and danced and sang and danced to look at his wife. I shall look on. I shall do so. At the end, after the sermon, he now asked the children, What do you want to eat? Say, Yam and egg. You call bread and egg. You, beans. You, rice and beans. You, spaghetti. You, indomie. There was a, a clash of meals. Meanwhile, there was not even a grain of curry in the whole of that orphanage. So they blessed the name of the Lord. And go and take your bath, then you come back to it. They were afraid of what they would say when the children went to take their bath. Now, this was the end of the story. Because in that place, we've been to the orphanage before, off Owolanke, the network there is bad. So sometimes, even when we go for programs there, to be able to read your text messages, you are like a watchman. You are, what you are looking for is not a thief. What you are looking for is network. He now moved and got to a tree and heard beep, 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 beep. So he thought, oh, money has come. But it wasn't money. Because the act of the command of faith was when you come back from taking your bath, you will eat. If money came in, would they fulfill that injunction? What will you need to do? You now go to market. So the, it was a text. We came from Ibadan and we brought food for the children. The food is outside your gate. We beat, hit your gate, but we heard you singing. Before somebody comes to steal the food, go outside and bring the food in. So they went out and brought the bags and opened the bags. When God wants to show you that he's involved, he comes in all his colors. The beautiful part of the testimony that was based on what came from Ibadan, that's what said to us. Every food combination that was mentioned was possible in the bags. Everyone. So you had your rice and beans, you had your indomie, your bread came from Ibadan, matched with your egg. Everything. So we heard of patriarchs. I think one of them was Judge Mula. He will sit at table and arrange plates and forks. He had a large orphanage of about maybe 50 children. Yes. And they will bless a meal, even though there's no food in the house. And consistently, their amen will coincide with a knock. And the knock will be the supplies of the meal. Consistently. The question is, can God, could God not have provided a supply they can keep? No, God wanted to show himself in another column. That's why when you go to Hebrews chapter 11, you see the same faith in many decorations. Is God displaying that in the enterprise of faith, he is an ingenuous God. He can solve difficult problems by both conventional and unconventional means and that it can never run out of solutions in getting it done. If all of us in this building had the same problem, we will not use up the possibilities of God in uniqueness when it comes to some, some problems. There are many songs we sing. We don't, it's just that we don't pay attention to the songs. Many of these songs were written by men who saw God I'm serving a lot of miracles. I know. Yes, I know. I'm serving a God of miracles. I know. Yes, I know. Let me close because we need to pray. So the crime was you killed him. But the man didn't feel like a killer. I have obeyed your instructions. When we used to read our daily bread, there was a young man who stood on a cliff. The story said, was it our daily bread or what for today? That was selling hugies. I think that's, was it what for today? But there was a devotional that he wrote. Stood on the cliff and said, 
I need the help. Is there somebody there? And God said, jump. And the guy turned back and said, is there any other person there? If you live the faith life, there will be a testimony to a jump. So I've heard people say that faith is a risk. But we need to reevaluate what is a risk. Yes. A risk is something that has the that something whose outcome is not guaranteed. Faith is not a risk. Because it is built on a constant. So shall my word be. It will not return void. So it's not risky. It's not risky. Whatever the sight of faith has revealed to you, it's a finished. Do you uh, wait? Wait. Let, let's come back to normal thing. Uh, as an have played, who yesterday? Sheffield United, and that's the whipping boy of the Premier League. And what was the score? Six zero. Okay, we have not watched the match, but we have seen the scores. If you now start watching the match, well, well, let's, that's, that's not even a good example because I heard that Sheffield did not play. All the passes of the Sheffield players was not equal to the pass of one player. But do you know that at least sometimes Sheffield will have shown that they want to score. And if you are watching that match tonight, as an Arsenal player, what will happen to you? <laughs> they want to score. The guy who has watched, who knows the score, who say, I beg, no to stop me. Say they want to score, say the score is 6 0. What God does in the communications of faith is to speak from the end. So it's not about who wins, who will win, and who will lose. The communication of faith is about who won and who has lost. The process is not going to affect the end. The end is set. And I'm so excited that it doesn't set the end and goes to sleep. It monitors the process. It monitors the process. So it, it's a win-win, it's a win-win life of faith. He says that there is nothing impossible with God. All the impossibilities with us, when we measure God by the impossibilities of our unbelief, it means your unbelief is creative. It creates impossibilities. It makes you see what is not real. But with him, nothing is impossible. The last one I copied, he says there are four principles that we need to maintain when it comes to a life of faith. First is to read the word of God. Every one of us must pay attention to the reading of the word of God. Why do we read the Bible in our services? It's because of the instruction that Paul gave to Timothy. Give attention also to the reading of the word. Let people know what God has in store for them as captured in their constitution of existence. The constitution of the faith life is your Bible. It is a compendium of the advertisements of the divine personality, his possibility, his privileges, and also his demands on your life. Read the Bible first. Second, consume, that's where study comes. Consume the word until the word consumes you. Meditation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Or whom shall I be afraid? Now, you started with being afraid of men. After a while, you may not even read the whole again. You're just whispering. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my, and my salvation. There is a way that repetition, that's the, that's, the, that's the spiritual concept of chance. A chance is actually a spiritual technology by which 
men achieve spiritual consciousness are you with me and what a chant thrives on is the ancient art of repetition hey I am 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 the sound if you keep repeating the sound it produces a pathway for that spirit to journey and as the spirit is journeying people become more aware of the presence of that spirit and they are lured into an activity that's what the chant is but you see as strong as a chant is that's the same way meditation works I will not be afraid I will not be afraid for he has said <laughs> I will never leave you nor forsake you so that we can confidently say the Lord is our helper we shall not be afraid that, that's, that's, that's meditation I remember a night a night I've shared the testimony long ago I used to live in Olukoko not too far from Dadishiobola's church my house was just beside them between that is church junction and the main junction, that's the center of that, road, the end of that Lukoko road, there used to be a small forest. And you could lose shoes, you could lose phones, you could lose laptops and tabs. These guys will hide in the forest, and as you approach, they shine their light on you, rush you. I said that my neighbor, my neighbor, had his head split with a cutlass because his only phone that he was carrying. This touch light phone, the phone itself has lost clips. So the phone was bound with a rubber band, two rubber bands. They still split the guy. The guy actually died. It's one of my stories of resurrection. <laughs> and one night I was coming from church. And you know, when we close from 40 that time, everybody goes to their house. Many people don't know how pastor goes home. Because there are times when pastor does not have transport fare. He needs to try to teach in hospital and then he starts to walk home. I know where you are, but you cannot be where you are forever. So rest. So that night as I was going, I know the stories. I saw torch lights. Woo! So I become a victim. Unfortunately, the torch lights met me on a high mood. My meditation was here come unto Mount Zion. The city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. 
along to an innumerable company of angels. What I saw was that torchlight turned into the road and the men fled. I wish that I could apprehend one of them to say, Oh boy, what do you see? Because I was not speaking too loud. What happened was that that road became Mount Zion. My awareness steered the realities. I've read books before. When one, I think was one of them was in living like a king's kid or so. A, a lady used to pass through some place, and men used to come and molest people. But it was this small statue lady used to pass safely. And one day, a certain big man met her. She said, "Who is that guy that always follows you? Very athletic, broad-chested, like a wrestler." She said, "No, she walks alone." She was not. In, she was not conscious of her defense system. There was an angelic being. That God allowed to crystallize into the natural. So they saw her with a physical bodyguard. Even the lady was not aware that she was walked with. I remember that night in Lagos when I got myself into trouble and they collected my belt. It was a Sunday night, January 16, 2011. I can't forget that day. <laughs> it was from church to cell. I was already hearing the sounds in the cell. Brutal guys. Caught because somebody was kidnapped. Caught because money was stolen. And I was a pastor whose business had gone south. They said, remove your socks. One man now said, leave his socks. Because the kind of mosquitoes there, they were, I think they were created as part of a vengeance move. They were matured mosquitoes. The bed bugs in that place were were made in hell. You could behold them big. Small, small cell. Who were about 36 of us. This house on who slept a month. On the wall. Only one mat. And we had a class captain that night in the cell. And the, the first person, the longest serving criminal is the class captain. Akin. I still have his phone number. Because when he came out, he said, if you come to Lagos, if anything is scattered, call my name with full ground. That's what he told me. Aki, Aki lived more in the cell than in his house. We had Yahoo boys who were established Yahoo boys. Say me, now just tomorrow I will come out that the police arrested me because my money has come. Once I pay them tomorrow morning, I move. All kinds of criminals. I remember there was Uche, who's, who borrowed money from neighbors so that his wife could travel to the UK. The wife got to the UK, and for a few months, Uche didn't hear from his wife again, a nurse, that time. And so Uche became a debtor, and they locked him up. I saw 36 men got freed because we prayed all night. Somebody now says prayer doesn't work. I can, as I entered, the last two guys that came, a driver and a gate man, their boss's daughter went for a party and didn't come back on time and they said that they kidnapped her. So they brought them in. And the rights of entrance is that once you come in, the last person who comes in gives you a right, a welcoming right. They beat you up. I came in tears. They had collected my belt so that I would not choke myself. I was only wearing singlet, the trouser I went to church, and socks. And as I was walking in, those guys came out and wanted to hit me. And Naki said, don't touch him. I had tears in my eyes. He said, sir, can't you, can't you see the angels that came here with you? In the cell. I was not aware that I was covered. He said, one thing, you are supposed to wash that toilet, but you not wash it. I will vacate my mat for you. I know you will go out tomorrow morning, but when you go out tomorrow morning, everybody is living here. And so I preached. People gave their lives to Christ in that cell that night. Then we now began to, to pray. To pray, to worship, to pray. The police were coming to people. He was strong. But in the morning, everybody's case was sorted. I left 1105, I left an empty cell. At 5 a.m., we now became intentional with our prayer labels. Why did you come here? This is what and what and what and what. All of us will pray. Let there be solutions. Let empty cell. If in the cell they come in, he comes in with you. How much more if you walk free? <laughs> you 
have deprived yourself. You see, the, the way man is designed is that if you are not conscious of help, you will not source it. Are you with me? Faith has attendant experiences. There's what we call the hearing of faith. And it's a sound that can come in the midst of silence. It's a clear sound that can come in the midst of noise. It is idiosyncratic to you. You make a move and somebody is saying, why are you moving? I heard something. They say when. It's only the man who is summoned that hears it. And that sound comes as an invitation onto a kind of possibility. There is also what we call the sight of faith. That's what Smith Wigusson says, that it sees victory all the time. We used to have a Christ embassy pastor in our school. I've forgotten her name now. As a student, the lecturer will come and say, All of you will fail in this class. She would rise up respectfully and say, Sir, um, nobody can fail in this class because I'm here and sit down quietly. You can't fail them. I saw her take a church from no members to a full church. I saw my pastor on Christ Embassy to do it, Pastor Harry Shukosu. She's married now. It was from her I learned. I hope you know that AWCN moved from about 41 members to 93 in one night. Jesus said, get every chair that you can get in 40 there. And I shared that I got 92 three-quarter chairs because the last chair, maybe you know that chair. There about it a I came in that night from a kitty. And it was a major night for him because it was a relationship break I came with. You know the story. You don't know. That's what I came with. You, why do you like ministry this much? Choose between me and ministry. And I looked and said, it's easy. I choose Jesus. And I walked away. And I came back. And he said, don't call anybody. Get every chair you can get with God. Now begin to lay hands on all of the chairs. Any chair you lay hands on, somebody sits on it tomorrow. So I got 92 full chairs and a three-quarter chair. Stood it against the wall. And even that chair was occupied. I learned that watching my pastor, Pastor Harry Shokosu. He laid. Thank you, Father, for John. Thank you, Father, for Kemi. Thank you, Father, for blessing. Thank you for Esther. Now I'm talking to my pastors now. That's how to spiritually grow membership. Thank you for. Thank you for. Because if there's an Esther, the Esther will come and take a seat. If there's a, a Cecilia, the Cecilia will come. If there's a Hassan, it will come. If there's an Abdullah, the Abdullah will come too. No, it, it's not your job to orchestrate their coming. But the chairs were made for human beings. They will sit. It is God who adds to them as many as should be saved. So God will go after them and he will bring them. That's how we feel that church, Christ Embassy Mina. Names, names. Maybe there was a Tolu, that's how I came. Because me, I was, I was choir member, lead singer in our church and I still became a church member there. <laughs> I don't know how I moved. Anima Moharasi Avatisa. Okay, because our time is gone. You can come. What if you can come? Stay with me. Stay with me. Just come. Come, come, come. You can come. Come, come, come. By the grace of God this weekend, by trusting Jesus to establish another worship center in the city of Ogumosh. That's the rebuilders, right? Rebuilders, Rebuilders International Christian Center. That's RICC. Many years ago, Jesus showed me that I was not just going to be a pastor of individuals, I was going to be a pastor of pastors. I'll share the vision with you so that you know what, why this is happening. I was on, there's this thing they do in 200 level, engineering, that you don't go home, swim. 
in 2004, November 7. As I came into my room, tired, we were, in, we were doing woodwork, we were making laboratory stools. That round head. I had cut so much, and as I came into my room, I turned my face to the wall, and instantly in a trance, I found myself on campus. And I began to see these balls fall down from heaven like Easter eggs. You know what an Easter egg is? It looks like a normal egg, but all decorated. And I was in that trance with my best friend on campus that time, um, Nathaniel Odelabi. He's from Ogomosho. And I told him, Nathaniel, these things are falling from heaven. They look precious. Pick them. Nathaniel is one of the most intelligent human beings I've ever met. Even under pressure, he's still intelligent. In that trance, he now told me, no, I'm not interested. So another one was coming. He now pushed me, and I ran and held it in my hand. He made it, the egg landed in my hand. It became a church with a tower on it. And I heard the voice, swallow it. When I woke up, the irregularity of that thing still gave me issues with my natural throat. And immediately it got into my belly. I heard him say, now I am making you one of the custodians of my church. Now a custodian is one who labors for the sustained existence and the preservation of the sanctity of something. So this work in saying, balance them, balance them, stay on the ancient path, don't do that, is a call of heaven. Stay with me. But I didn't understand what the balls were. And from November 7, 2004, it became a part of my prayer labors that God would demystify that vision. I was not willing to contact another man because if it began in God, God must interpret it. In 2011, I think on the 6th of June, I was on one of those my prayer walks from Shalom Medical Center. I would get to not Ahoya, yeah. Kiateka, and come back in the sun. When I got into that road that goes to Rounder, the Lord said to me, look up, and in broad daylight, I saw the balls coming. The Lord said to me, these are many ministries that under your watchful care will be preserved in the faith. So I understand that the day will come when non-HWCN labors will be watched over by this boy. We want to pray for our brother and our sister because Saturday and Sunday, I will be in the company of my brother Sunday morning. I will be in the company of my brother and other ministers, my brother I speak of, Pastor Judah Lomai. I purposely chose Pastor Judah because I have peeped into the cherry of his work. The balance of doctrine. Constant, the, the balance of life. So he will do my work on Saturday, but I want to sit on Sunday morning. This work we try. Yes. Its influence will be like a wildfire. And for as many as are trusting the Lord for a church where they can meet Jesus, this will be one. I want you to stretch your hands to them and ask that the giver of this mandate will be pleased to journey with them. The rest of my prayers will come on, on Sunday morning. Yes. This is not one ministry that will start and pack up. No. Part of their mandate is to operate as a shining light. That's what God told me. And in the shape of shining, they will, they will reveal falsehood. There are things that will shut down because of the arising. I know that hands will be, hands will be stretched to attempt to touch them, but I have a word from God that if those attempts ever happen, those hands will never be stretched again. The Lord has decreed that the shield of this house will be extended over that work. So also the sword of this house. Yes. 
like the Lord has labored to bring me this far in the in 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 the tut under the tutelage of the Holy Spirit, He has promised me that He will teach them. Yes, like we on the third of February, twenty thirteen. Little children walked out and began to obey Jesus. They are also starting out, and this work will last. It will become big. It's an international ministry, and it will not just bear the name. The boundaries around it are enlarged. We're asking that there will be a deposit, a deposit of the freshness of oil, that God will connect them to a well that cannot run dry. No. You will not be irrigated just from a pot. You will not be irrigated from a tank. We connect you to an ancient well. An ancient well that ensures that that center is permanently a revival center. He will open your eyes like he did open the eyes of Moses to see the tabernacle and he will strengthen your heart against all odds, against all invitations unto compromise to build what exactly you have seen. Is somebody praying? Is somebody praying? We have two more minutes to pray. My, my own prayer is on, is on Sunday. Oh, fresh oil. Oh, fresh oil. We stand with you as your brethren and we decree that the work of the Lord prospers in your hand. That fragrance that God has waited to see emerge from Obomoso that has been allocated to you will hit the ends of the earth in the name of Jesus. There will be no weariness. You will be strong. There will be a supply of resources, unending resources, such as we have received the help of God. You will also receive any mighty. Yes, I forbid it in the name of Jesus. And there will be abundance of revelatory knowledge. Like it works for us, it will work for you. You are kept in the faith. That which was once delivered unto the saints. As a young year. Thank you, Father. For your to fail for to fail us. Your to fail for to disappoint us. 